Advanced Accounting 20 Piecemeal Acquisition. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep. Our LinkedIn group is the MBA Accounting and Finance site. And our source for this video was a very good handout from a professor at the University of Miami Business School. Piecemeal acquisition has to do with acquiring a company as the term says piecemeal or over time and that's what's going on in this problem. There are a couple of variables that we'll see in this video and some of the ones down the road in that uh, stock is bought periodically over time, stock is bought at different purchase prices over time and at the end of the each quarter we have to somehow value the investment that we've made and so those are some of the issues that we're going to see here. I'm going to slide up to the top and talk about our company S which is our subsidiary as of January 1st of XO. Owner's equity as we know is assets minus liabilities or what the value of a company is and so normally we see that made up of common stock and retained earnings as we see here for total owner's equity of $2 million. Shares outstanding means shares held by the public. There are a million shares. And if I take A, total equity divided by shares a million, A divided by B, I get my book value per share, which is how much is the company really worth per common share outstanding. That's S, our subsidiary. P, our parent company, gradually buys shares in the subsidiary over time. So I have a heading here for a schedule called Purchases of S Company, Common Stock. Tranche refers to a bucket. So you buy a certain number of shares on a certain date, and that goes into a bucket called a tranche. It's really more of a uh, bond investment term, a finance term than it is an accounting term. So we can see that over four periods of time during the year XO, the parent company buys shares, various shares of S company, S common stock. S's shares outstanding during this year remain the same. And what I've done over here is to record what percentage of the total outstanding shares have been purchased by the parent. So on January 1st, we purchase 100,000. 100,000 divided by a million, A divided by B is 10%. So we own 10% on that purchase and 10% cumulatively because that's the first time we bought the stock. On April 1st, we buy 300,000 more shares. 300,000 A divided by a million B gets us 30%, A divided by B. Our cumulative interest in red is the 10% from last time plus the 30% this time to get us to 40%. July, we buy another 200,000. It's 20% of the issue on that purchase. We had 40% owned. We buy another 20% and we get a new total of 60. And then the last purchase during that year, we purchased 50,000, 5%. 60 plus 5 percent is 65 percent at the end of the year. And then there's a little twist in the problem. There is a new stock issuance which we define as the first time you, sh you sell shares to the public is uh, our brand new shares. So the result here is, is that P the parent buys all 200,000 of the newly issued shares that S, the subsidiary issue. So on January 1st, X1, the next year, this was all XO, this is X1, they buy 200,000 shares, and you'll notice here that S's shares outstanding go from a million to 1.2 million. It increases by 200,000 shares. The new purchase, and this is what's confusing, if I just take 200,000 divided by 1.2 million, that's one-sixth or about 17 percent. But the cumulative interest that P has in S is actually the total number of shares owned by P, which is all of these, that add up to 850. You see there's a sum formula there. 
And if I take the 850,000 Z divided by 1.2 million B as in boy, Z as in zipper divided by B, P now owns 70.83% of the total issue. What I started doing down here at the bottom was we're going to start filling in a chart that's going to include the price paid per share. So let's take January 1st as an example. We already know they bought 100000 and the new information is we paid $2.50 a share. If I take 100,000 shares multiplied by $2.50, I get $250,000. And my investment per share is $2.50. Now that investment per share is going to change over time. And I mentioned journal entries in this heading. What will be the journal entry on January 1st to record the purchase of S common stock. What's the rec what's the entry that P, the parent, makes on their books? Well, they'd have an asset account called investment in S for 250000 debit to increase it. And we would credit cash to decrease it, 250000 I've also put in journal entries over here, and you'll see that we have an asset account called investment in S that's debited on January 1st for 250000 The last thing we'll talk about today is, well, we've got to do something at quarter end. We have to recognize, using this cost fair market value method, some value change, the change in the value of the stock from the price we paid 250 compared with the stock price at the end of the quarter which is March 31st. So that difference between the stock price and the purchase price is 10 cents a share. We multiply it times the 100,000 shares we bought on January 1st and the value of our investment is $10,000 higher in red than it was when we bought the shares on January 1st. So what entry do we make? We segregate so a statement reader can see that change in valuation by debiting an account called investment valuation 10000 That's going to be in the balance sheet. We don't recognize a gain. Instead, we credit an account called other comprehensive income that's going to go in the equity section of stockholder, the stockholders equity section specifically on the balance sheet. So investment valuation account, asset account, other comprehensive income called OCI as an abbreviation is in the equity section. We saw other comprehensive income if you watched our videos on pensions. So the last thing I'd like to show you is we're going to have journal entries over here so you can trace back and forth and understand what's going on. We have an asset account called investment valuation. We made this entry on March 31st. Other comprehensive income is credited to be increased on March 31st. That's as far as we're going to get on Advanced Accounting 28. There'll be more on YouTube down the road. Our Not on the Web page is additional videos and spreadsheets that are not on YouTube. Our YouTube channel that you can search is Ken Boyd STL. You can email me for a complete listing of all of our videos on YouTube. For live tutoring and chat sessions, here's our website, our email, and our phone. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.